So let's save this last little bit uh, for a topic that I wish we had more time on, but we're kind of running toward the end here. Um, and that is immunotherapy for uh, triple negative breast cancer and breast cancer in general. I mean, it's just, un I'm not saying unfortunate because I have Hope Rugo sitting next to me who's a big immunotherapist, but I think we all would have hoped that we would have gotten more bang for the buck like our colleagues no, in melanoma. I think we are has. getting bang for so the buck. So why don't you finally. tell us about it? Tell us about <laughs> immunotherapy. What, what's the latest <laughs> immunotherapy since So they, I think it makes perfect sense and it fits all into everything we know, which is that as the tumor progresses, it starts suppressing the host immune system more and more. So what happens is immunotherapy for breast cancer and not very immunogenic disease, it's really important to do it early. So we saw a tr doubling of tripling of pathologic complete response rates in the neoadjuvant eye spy trial. And in the first line trials in pdl one positive tumors uh, in Keynote, as well as the entezolizumab trial that also focused on patients with pdl one positive disease, we're seeing response rates just under 25%. And what's really important about those response rates is that responders do really well. So if you look at those curves, those patients are sitting out there with responses out past two years, and these are patients with triple negative breast cancer. So that's exciting. I, I think that what that the next step moves to, we've also seen some data from Shireen Loy looking at our keynote trial in TILS and some data from other studies as well. That's tumor that infiltrating lymphocytes, just so people know. High right. tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, and it's not like any big scientific, you know, definition of how many. It's like more than 50%. Like, you know, you say, okay, you have this many, the ones that are on the top half. And those patients also respond. It makes perfect sense. You get less TILS as the cancer progresses. So what should we be doing next is, and we're, of course, already doing it, and we'll see data reported, I think, in the near future, is using agents that can try and help the immune system for patients whose own immune system may be lagging behind. But we're going to have to do that early. Neoadjuvant, there are phase two phase three trials, um, adjuvant trials, and then in first-line metastatic, giving chemotherapy with checkpoint inhibitors where we've seen that we increase TILS, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, uh, and hoping that that may result in improved uh, responses and response duration. And then also looking at immune agonists. So there's interesting, lots of different combinations that are being looked at, even PARP inhibitors uh, in uh, tri early I like trials. The PARP. I like the, the, the Olaparib and Dervalumab. The DNA stranded we don't know, uh, immune yeah, no. response. I mean, I think that's a great... But, preclinical idea. There are also immune agonists. So there are uh, drugs which actually stimulate the immune system uh, and they're known to do that that are being combined with checkpoint inhibitors with some encouraging data in the diseases that are most responsive. So it's we have a TBCRC trial where we're looking actually at uh, two different immune agonists as well as a MEK inhibitor and you're involved in a MEK inhibitor trial as well where there's great preclinical data. So I think that you know, we're, we're looking at an explosion of studies now and a lot of excitement, and hopefully we'll be able to hone down and figure out who's going to respond and how we can best capitalize on that. The problem is we don't have the biomarker yet. PD, PDL1 is lowly expressed in, in uh, breast cancer compared to some other tumors, and it's a decent biomarker, but it's not great. And I think that generally, especially ER positive breast cancer, is not an inflamed hot tumor. Right. But the neoadjuvant data I spy is really very impressive. It is. That, uh, that was very ER impressive. Positive, yes. that was and very, in the ER that was positive. Very, the yeah. neoadjuvant data is very impressive. Great. I think we're uh, just about done. I think that, you know, to kind of summarize here, this has been extremely informative. And before the end of this, well, actually, before we go, there's one last thing we should talk about. And we'll just devote two or three minutes to it uh, before we go to the extremely informative part of this, um, <laughs> the extremely informative summary. Uh, and that is Sakatuzumab. I think we had talked about you know, we've been looking for antibody drug conjugates for a long time, and we seem to have a really exciting one in HER2 beyond TDM1. I guess Traz D, I'm going to call it. <laughs> you know, now we have, uh, it's Sakatuzumab, or it's Sasatuzumab. We, I like Sakatuzumab, but um, um, do you want to talk about Sakatuzumab? Yeah, sure. I think, it, yeah, we're definitely getting excited, as we say, about antibody drug conjugates, and I think we spoke about how it has the components of an antibody and a payload, and I think identifying the right target beyond HER2 has been something that has been very interesting uh, to look at. And so in this case with sacatuzumab, um, the target that they're looking at is a protein called TROPE2, which is a surface glycoprotein that is expressed in more than 90% of triple negative breast cancers. So this was very impressive data um, that Aditya presented actually from the Dana-Farber, looking at a third line treatment in metastatic triple negative breast cancer where we know the response rates are not beyond 20% at the very best. And in these patient population, about 110 patients, I believe, the response rates were impressive at 34% with a median progression-free survival of five and a half months. And, and this drug also has a breakthrough FDA designation for the same reason. So I think these are exciting data. 
And the overall survival, I think, is similar to what we saw with the EMBRACE trial with 13 months. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it, it, it's a great drug, sounds like, and it's good efficacy that we're seeing in the third line setting. So it's very and encouraging for our patients. And the phase three trial is now opening, opening um, up to five lines of prior therapy, which is great. Right. Against so physician's choice, it's a study. great trial. Yeah. Very similar to the, um, the uh, EMBRACE, data, EMBRACE design. I think it's a great design. Right. It really is for an area that was totally unmet need. And it's pretty well tolerated. It, it is, is very really well tolerated. Well tolerated. It's a great, yeah. great new good delivery job. systems for chemotherapy still have a role in this new world where yeah, immunotherapy is coming. Play. Absolutely. And the things we have to yeah. think the about, I think what's is impressive. Right, we've got to think about the antigen that we're using and the payload to antibody ratios. That's I think right. are very important. And also, this. hopefully in the future, we will not refer to triple negative breast cancer, which means nothing. Yeah, right, exactly. That's <laughs> a whole other, we didn't even discuss that. Right, right, right. exactly. Yes, yeah. absolutely.